All right, so once we have this equation of a plane, we can solve simple problems about the plane. If I give you three points and ask you to find an equation of a plane through three points, Uh, through three points, P, Q, and R. And I'll give you coordinates of all three points. What would be a way to find an equation? Well, one way is very, very algebraic. You would say that, okay, I'm looking for an equation like this. I don't know what A, B, C, and D are. But I know that if I substitute coordinates of P into there, I'll have true equality. Right? So, algebraically, the fact that P belongs to the plane means that A multiplied by P1, first coordinate of P, plus B multiplied by P2, plus C multiplied by P3, equals D. So, this algebraic equation states that a point P belongs to the plane like that. And then you have Q on that plane, you have R on that plane, you have two more equations, and you want those three conditions to happen simultaneously. The plane should pass through all three. So A Q1 plus B Q2 plus C Q3 equals D, and A R1. plus BR2 plus CR3 equals D. And now we interpreted this geometric question purely algebraically. We have to solve a system of three equations and how many unknowns are there? Four. four. Don't we have four unknowns? What are those? A, B, C, D. A, B, C, D. Isn't that a problem? Well, that's a problem. Can you find, can you solve a system of three equations with four unknowns? No. That's a problem. So there is no relief in passing to algebra. We are stuck. So let me give you an example of a system. 3x equals 5, oh, sorry, the, no, a times 3 equals d, just because p2, p3 equal to 0, uh, b times 4 also equals d, and c times 7 also equal to d. Can we solve this system of equations? Not good, not good. Can you give me one solution? I'm not asking for all solutions. But just one. Can you give me the values of A, B, C, and D to make all three equations satisfy? Hmm? Zero? All four zeros? All zeros. Isn't that true? So you can solve this. You see, you learn something in a few seconds. Now you you can solve the system. Well, that's one solution, right? Can you give me more? Is there any other solution? Or maybe this is just one solution? Infinity? Infinity? Infinity. Well, all of them are infinity. If all those were infinity, then my equation would be infinity x plus infinity y. That's not really an equation. Okay. So, you have d equal to 1. Yeah, d equal to 1. So you make d equals 1? Or anything else. 
And you think. Okay, let's start with one. So you make d equals one, and then what? And then solve for, for the others, right? Okay, and that way I get, well, one seventh, a quarter, a third. Can you give me more solutions? Tim, can, can you give me it's, more? It's so just give me any number, right? And I can solve for all three others. So how many different solutions are there? Infinitely many. Infinitely many. Right? So you have so-called underdetermined system. You have less conditions than the number of variables, and that makes you have infinitely many possible solutions. Okay, so we figured out some algebra. At least in this simple case, you can solve the system, you can figure out infinitely many solutions. Well, are there infinitely many planes through the points? No? Well, it's good you don't give up on your belief, right? That three points determine just one plane. But how come algebraically... Well, of course, I still have this solution, zero, 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 zero. And let's say seven, one, seven fourths and seven thirds. And I can use any set of these coefficients to make a plane through those points. Right? Isn't that a problem? So you can have a plane one third x plus one fourth y plus one seventh z equals one. You can also make a plane zero x plus zero y plus zero z equals zero. Is that equation of a plane, by the way? Is that equation of a point? What kind of equation is that? Yeah. Nothing? Well, I have to tell you, this is the best equation ever. I love this equation. So the equation is 0 equals 0, isn't it? Can you find the solution of this equation? Can you find the values? of x, y, and z solving this equation? No? Well, if you take x equals 1, y equals 2, z equals 3, and you substitute all those into this equation, will it become true? So 1, 2, 3 is a solution. What about minus 1, minus 7, 24? Take those values, substitute into this equation, is that true? So that equation has anything as a solution. So that equation describes the whole space. It gives no restriction whatsoever. So that's exactly why it's so great equation. As opposed to an equation, I will put it on the side, one equals zero. What will that equation describe? Well, an equation, just to be more precise, an equation 0 times x, because that should be equation on x, y, and z. Right? 0 times x plus 0 times y plus 0 times z equals 1. Now, what is that describing? How many solutions are there? No, no solutions. Right? So that's another extreme. One example gives you everything, and the other gives you nothing. And of course, we usually expect an equation like that to represent something, not everything, but also not nothing. So, so there are exceptions, and we will stay away from this exception, because it doesn't describe a plane for us. But this describes a plane, this equation. And that equation describes a plane. So what about these planes? How come we have infinitely many planes? Do we have infinitely many? No? Can you say they're parallel? Like, you 
So this plane is multiplied, well, this plane is the same multiplied by a coefficient. Well, this is algebraically speaking, the equation here is multiplied by a number, right? So algebraically, it is a different equation. But what about a solution of this equation versus a solution of that equation? If a point x, y, z belongs to this plane, will it belong to that plane? Sure it will. And any point of that plane will belong to this plane. So geometrically, these describe the same plane. Right? So, and actually all of those, infinitely many, describe the same plane. So we have a great variety of equations, but all of those amount to exactly the same geometric object. All right, so this way you can find an equation. And uh, so let me mention this uh, difficulty I have uh, regarding WebSign. Uh, when I ask you to find the equation of a plane, one student might find this equation, and another student might find that equation. And each of these equations is the correct equation, right? So how can I possibly check your answer on WebAssign if your answer is correct? Well, the limitation I have is that uh, the only thing I would like to check is a number against a number. So. If I check your coefficient with x, and if I check that, if I assign, go with I'm saying that, well, the coefficient with x should be one third, period. Would that be fair, requiring you to represent the coefficient I figured out and never told you? No, so what, what should I do? Well, I actually changed the wording of the question. You have to find the equation of a plane, but there is something about this plane that should not depend on the coefficients. And what I ask you to do, I think, is to find z-intercept of that plane. So geometrically, a plane intersects z-axis at some point, and that value, the value of z-intercept, should not depend on the equation. Okay. And that's what I'm asking on WebAssign. Find the equation and then find the z-intercept. Can you find z-intercept? Or well, what does it mean to have z-intercept? It means x equals 0, y equals 0. Right. So take your equation, substitute x equals 0, y equals 0. Solve for z, that's the answer for WebAssign. So uh, there are tricks like that I'm using on WebAssign just to make sure that I have to compare two numbers and you never get correct answer without getting a point on WebAssign. So, uh, but usually those are simple tricks. <laughs>